cut your taxes even further. That's what built our economy. I will make the Trump tax cuts permanent. You know, they expire in a year. And we will cut your taxes even more than that. Well, Republicans in Congress are already getting to work on that very goal. In fact, they're preparing to work with Donald Trump to extend his 2017 tax cuts if he does, in fact, win the presidency again. And that would not only just hand more gifts to the richest, wealthiest Americans, it would also serve as a disaster for our our, our already ballooning national debt. Now, they're already talking about slashing the corporate tax even more, if you could believe it. So not only are they gonna extend the tax cuts, they might cut taxes even further for corporations. And we're gonna get to the details on that, so stick around for those details. But first, why don't we talk about the possible extension under Trump? Now, parts of the tax cuts and uh, I'm sorry, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 or TCJA were permanent changes, but some were actually written to expire or sunset. And so the date of expiration, I guess, is December 31st of next year, 2025. The major aspects of the bill set to end are provisions basically impacting individual taxpayers. So the TCGA temporarily reduced federal income taxes pretty much across the board. There's One marginal tax bracket that for some reason didn't see a change, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about in just a moment as we bring this chart up. But I wanted to give you the comparisons here so you get an understanding of what the tax rates would be should the tax cuts for individuals sunset. So the top marginal tax rate, which applies to single taxpayers making over $578,000 yearly, was cut under Trump from 39.6% to 37%. Now, if the bill is allowed to expire, the individual rates will revert to pre-tax cut levels after 2025, of course, which are shown in the right column of this chart. So the, the one area where there will be no change is the income level of $231,251 to $578,125. The current marginal tax rate is 35%. After the you know, sunsetting of the Trump tax cuts for individuals, it will remain at 35%. But every other group, you will see that there is an increase in their uh, marginal tax rates, right? So from uh, $11,001 to $44,725, it'll go from 12% to 15%. So for ordinary people who aren't rich, there would be a little bit of a change, but let's also be realistic here and talk about where the bulk of the tax cuts are with the 2017 tax cut. They're for the rich, right? So I'll I'll give you the details on that. So um, in reality, the bill overwhelmingly helped the rich. So households with incomes in the top 1% will receive an average tax cut of more than $60,000 next year alone in 2025, compared to an average tax cut of less than $500 for households in the bottom 60%, according to the Tax Policy Center. As a share of after-tax income, tax cuts at the top for both households in the top 1% and the top 5% are more than triple the total value of the tax cuts received for people with incomes in the bottom 60%. So hopefully that'll help out with giving you some perspective on how, sure, ordinary workers might have seen a little bit of a decrease in their taxes under Trump's tax cuts, but the bulk of those tax savings positively impacted the wealthiest earners. And the rich would get even more goodies if these uh, tax cuts are extended, which is exactly what the GOP is currently working on. There are also higher federal gift and estate tax exemptions through 2025, which allow more ultra wealthy Americans to transfer tax free assets to the next generation. In 2024, the tax free limits on gifts during life or death rose to $13, I'm sorry, $13.61 million per individual or 27. Uh, to 2 million for spouses, but those limits will drop by about half in 2026 without new laws from Congress. So the wealthy, as we speak, are kind of panicking about the estate tax. 
which is amazing to me because look, I get that I don't have kids. So maybe I just don't have that mindset since I'm not thinking about passing my wealth to someone else after I die. But when I die, I die. Like it's it's over. I am not, I'm already stressed out about living. I'm not going to be stressed out about what happens to my assets after I'm gone. But I get it. If you have children, you want your children to inherit or your family members to inherit as much as possible without paying any taxes to the federal government. But please look at the figures we're talking about here. We're talking about tens of millions of dollars. Okay, we're talking vast majority of Americans don't need to worry about the estate tax cuts under Trump expiring. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. But let me continue. Robert Dietz, who's a national director of tax research at Bernstein Private Wealth Management, says that it's the biggest issue that we're talking about with clients right now, meaning the estate tax cuts essentially sunsetting. So the legislation already contributed to exploding our deficit and will continue to do so if extended. And honestly, I think it will be extended because one of the mistakes that people make, particularly those in the Democratic Party, is this assumption that Democrats don't want tax cuts for the rich. Remember, they're rich as well, and they benefit from tax cuts as well. And so they'll play bad cop, but when push comes to shove, they'll totally sign on to budget reconciliation, which I'll get to the details of, in order to allow for the passage of this type of legislation in the Senate, where you typically need at least 60 senators to vote in favor of something in order to pass that legislation. But with budget reconciliation, those rules don't apply. And it's interesting how the legislative filibuster gets pushed aside whenever it comes to raising the debt ceiling or cutting taxes. But let me give you more. The CBO projected this month that extending the law through 2034 would cost $4.6 trillion. And we already know based on analysis that was done by the CBO prior to the passage of Trump's tax cuts, that it cost us $2 trillion over the course of a decade. Now, in response to these assessments, some lawmakers just denied the accuracy of the analysis done by the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office. Senator John Barrasso just says, CBO is regularly wrong, and I expect that they are on this as well because this is going to result in significant growth, except the tax cuts, unfortunately, did not result in significant growth. They didn't. The increased profits of corporations, for instance, were not trickled down onto workers, and there was an increased innovation or increased job creation as a result of these tax cuts. And look, uh, think tanks disagree with what John Barrasso says. The conservative leaning tax foundation says extending the expiring cuts would spur some growth, but come more than $3 trillion short of paying for itself. So remember, you're going to hear over and over again, no, no, these tax cuts, the extension of these tax cuts makes all the sense in the world. It's going to pay for itself, everyone. It's going to be fine. Except even a conservative think tank admits that is not the case. Now let's pivot to the corporate tax because this is where things get even more insane. Now, if you can remember, Donald Trump cut the corporate tax rate from 35% to 21%. They might actually cut the corporate tax rate even more should Trump get elected and Republicans maintain control of the House. So, um, Let's get to the details of that. Representative Vern Buchanan, who heads the manufacturing taxation team, manufacturing taxation team on the Ways and Means Committee, which really does sound like a blast, says in terms of the corporate tax rate, that doesn't sunset. So they don't have to worry about that expiring, right? But they might try to take the tax rates down at some point. We want to find a way that we can create more incentives for manufacturers to create more jobs and opportunity to do more of the work here in the United States instead of abroad. Or it'll just create more opportunity for you to get campaign contributions from corporate interests that obviously want to further cut corporate taxes. And remember, one of the things that Trump claimed that he was going to do with his 
you know, his tax reform was, okay, yeah, I'm going to cut the corporate tax rate, but I'm going to get rid of the loopholes, which significantly lowers the effective tax rate. So one analysis that was done on the effective tax rate back when the corporate tax rate was 35% showed that corporations typically pay with a 35% corporate tax rate, about 17% after all those corporate tax loopholes and deductions come into play. Now, Trump lowered the tax rate and he didn't get rid of those loopholes, which really did cause all sorts of revenue issues for our federal government. And look, I have to I have to get this out of the way too because look, if I felt that we had the type of government that actually fought to pass legislation that funded programs that make all of our lives better, I would be even more infuriated by this. Okay? But what's infuriating is when you look at what's happening in Israel and the billions, tens of billions of dollars in weaponry that we're sending over to them so they can conduct their atrocities in Gaza. The working class in America is funding that. And that infuriates me to no end, okay? These are the politicians who get bribed by these corporate interests, these moneyed interests. There's a, a lot of, you know, uh, what do you call it? A lot of these people also tend to be in favor of funding and, and pro providing foreign aid to Israel. But it's just amazing to me because they don't have to pay the same percentage of their income toward taxes that ordinary working Americans barely getting by have to contribute to federal taxes. And then that money doesn't get used to make our lives better. That money gets used for nonsense. It gets used to pass legislation that really ends up providing grants and all sorts of goodies to corporate interests. I mean, the infrastructure bill is a perfect example of that. I've said it time and time again, my problems with the infrastructure bill have to do with the fact that it's really a corporate handout bill. It's the federal government taking taxpayer money from the you know working class people who actually pay their taxes, who pay a huge percentage of their earnings toward federal taxes. They take that money and they give it to corporations in order to manage infrastructure or build infrastructure, they inflate the costs of construction to pocket some of that money. We've seen a lot of that happen here in Los Angeles with the development of housing, right? Which is why it's cost so much money to build so few housing units in LA. And it's just infuri it's just totally infuriating because it feels like working class people in this country get robbed. And the wealthiest people are able to skirt that system because they're not taxed to the same rate, to the same percentage. They get all these deductions, all these loopholes, all of these benefits and goodies that ordinary working class people don't get. And back in the day, you know, one of the things that Americans were able to do, one of the deductions they were able to take advantage of was the mortgage interest rate deduction. So when you pay your mortgage, you know, there's some percentage of the interest that you pay on your mortgage that is deductible. Property taxes are deductible. Donald Trump actually limited the amount of money that you can deduct from your taxes using the property taxes you pay in your state. So that was really harmful for people who live in places like New Jersey or in California. Um, and it's just, it's just been incredibly frustrating. All of this has been very frustrating for ordinary people. But what's amazing to me is no one seems to connect the dots to this awful tax policy that is not only going to be extended, it might even be expanded with additional cuts to the corporate tax rates. Now, new research shows that workers who earned less than about $114,000 on average in 2016 actually saw no change in earnings from the corporate tax rate cut. So the corporate tax rate cut did not lead to the trickle down utopia that we keep hearing about from you know, those who really value neoliberal policy. And if you're wondering if Republicans are gonna succeed, I think they will, honestly. I mean, if Trump gets elected, which right now he's got a pretty good chance. And if Republicans continue to take control of the House of Representatives, I think they will probably pass this legislation and they'll do it through budget reconciliation. So while most legislation needs the support of 60 senators to avert a filibuster, budget reconciliation allows lawmakers to pass major tax and spending bills with a simple majority and without bipartisan backing. <laughs> And according to the Hill, Republican tax writers have already broken in 
into working groups on specific tax topics so that the House GOP can get straight to work if the GOP sweeps Congress and the White House. Ways and Means Republicans have been pretty cagey about the extensions or expansions of the Trump tax cuts and like whether the tax cuts can be paid for. So there's a big enough block, I think, says Richard Rubin. Uh, I'm sorry, says David Schweckert, who is a Republican from Arizona. Um, I think even on our side, who will look for pay force. Now, he says that the changes to restrain healthcare costs and improve government technology could be on the table. It may be our opportunity to actually do some adult policy instead of theatrics. That, okay, they're not going to do any adult policy. They're going to do favors for their corporate donors, for the moneyed interests that fund their campaigns. And then when push comes to shove and there's any discussion about domestic policy that might improve the lives of ordinary Americans, suddenly we're gonna hear about the filibuster. We're gonna hear about how there's gridlock in Congress. We're gonna hear about how we can't pay for it because of the deficit, because of our ballooning debt. We're gonna hear the same excuses over and over and over again. And so really, in my opinion, the only way to change things is to have more of a say in your personal workplace, which is why the effort to organize workplaces across the country is like the one area where I feel a little bit of hope in the country. But as long as we have this system where moneyed interests have a louder voice than ordinary voters like us, then you're gonna have these lawmakers literally working on legislation and policy before they even take control of the levers of power necessary to pass that legislation. And that is what Republicans are up to right now. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence. And that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.